Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey everybody, welcome back to Studio 3B, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. I'm Steve Stack, and I have a feeling I'm gonna have some interesting conversation today with our guests. Joe and Mike Delaretto of Delaro Construction out of East Liverpool, Ohio. And uh, we're gonna to talk to them about how they've witnessed the uh, building industry, both commercially and residentially, evolve through the years. And, and uh, they, have, they have a lot of good experience behind them and a unique story in and of itself. And I just know the guy to my right uh, Mr. Joe probably has some stories that he's going to share with us. So, guys, welcome to Studio 3B. Well, thanks for having us. Hello, Steve. <laughs> Are you going to behave today? I'm going to try. Okay. All right. Well, well, we set the guidelines before we went went on camera. So, do I have to try live, hard? Do I have to live by them? Try hard. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm excited to have you guys here. Both uh, we've enjoyed over the years, uh, a business relationship, a friendship, and, and uh, it's, it, it's been fun over the years. And, and watching, watching you guys' business grow and develop and the baton being passed. Uh, Mike, do you want to take us through it a little bit? Give us a little background about, about your company? Sure. Um, my dad actually started uh, a company called JNR Builders back uh, what dad early seventies. I was yeah pretty young. I was uh, twelve twelve years old or so, um, and they uh, it was just a partnership, and they grew quite quickly. And uh, I think uh, business got a little ahead of you, or w what would you say? Kind of kind of got ahead and. Yeah, and one, uh, one partner lost a little interest. And, and, and so uh, in 1978, uh, he decided to walk away from what was then JNR Builders and create the Loretto Construction. And um, I didn't know um, that. That was my senior year of high school. And uh, so I graduated and ended up going to Youngstown State for a couple of years. And uh, we basically worked as just a partnership, or you know, as as the two of us. And uh, I'd come home every weekend and get ahead, or help get ahead, you know, on the heavy stuff. I mean, he would handle everything, but I'd help get ahead, you know, putting trusses up, uh, helping frame, do whatever. And then uh, he'd work the rest of the week while I was up at school. And so that went on for the couple three years I was in college, uh, but then worked every summer. And then uh, right after that came out and started working full time at that point. And uh, it was kind of fun because we were doing a lot. Huh? I mean, we were uh, 60, 70 hours a week and yeah. I was getting paid by the hour. And I still have my pay stub. So I was making like 350 an hour, you know, <laughs> at that time. Eight but, hour uh, days, only eight hour days. So. Yeah, no, 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 he, no, he was paying me. He was, he was paying me by the hour. And so finally comes to me and says, uh, uh, what do you want to do? And I said, this is what I want to do. I want to, you know, be a carpenter. And he says, you want to be a partner? And I said, yeah, I'd like to be a partner. And at that point, he made me a full 50% partner. Well, the next week comes and my paycheck comes and I look at my paycheck and it's like cut in half. And I said, what the heck's going on here? He says, welcome partner. <laughs> <laughs> and the paycheck's never gone up since. <laughs> you but, didn't do uh, that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was making the same as I was. <laughs> Yeah, so that, uh, but that's basically uh, how we got started. But I would say back then we were more 
I mean, we would do houses, uh, you know, some houses and things, but a lot of siding, a lot of roofs. Back in the 80s, uh, it was tough. Oh, I mean, yeah. It was, yeah, there it was, was there really was a, lean. There was a big downturn in, in new housing. Yeah, and uh, I can remember, I think one summer, about all we did was roofs Yeah, uh, for the entire time. And I'm going to tell you what, you talk about not wanting to get up in the morning. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was miserable. Slate tear-offs, and but it, it put paid the bills, kept things going, and uh, just, uh, but but we always, we always were looking for newer, uh, you know, different trends, different. So, so, but like, like Baird Brothers, in the, in the housing downturns, you find something to stay busy. Yeah. And, and uh, you guys uh, recognize that the remodeling side of the industry is, is, is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's guys that live with it strictly doing remodeling, mm -hmm. but for you guys to have the flexibility on the remodeling side, jump into the, the new home construction and, and then mix in some commercial alongside it. I mean, it's, you've got a nice broad base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually had to uh, actually built a home on spec before anybody would even talk to us about building a home. You, you had to prove that you could build a house before they would talk to you. Oh yeah. And I actually put one up in speculation to... Uh, and that, just, to, just to get that credibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. sold it for what I had in it. And the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I, I, and that's, that's very true, you know. Uh, Especially, you know, in, in, in that time frame, uh, people weren't building spec houses. Yeah. <laughs> nobody yeah, was, nobody was sticking it. their neck out. Yeah, yeah, right? Right. And you went ahead and took the leap and yeah. it worked out for you. Yeah, luckily. <laughs> how, how are you guys, how, how's your uh, residential new home construction versus a commercial? You guys... Well, I, I think first off, it, it, it's, we can't put a number to like 50%, 50, you know, it, it, it's not a 60, 40 or something like yeah. that. The, the thing that uh, you have to understand is um, we made a decision long ago that we want to put our heads on our pillows every night. Okay. And so in doing that, you know, we typically work in about a 15 to 20 mile radius and we've done that all of our lives. But in order to do that, you have to be uh, you have to be able to do anything. And so uh, what's nice about in East Liverpool is that we service the greater East Liverpool area. And it's everything from, you know, building banks, doctors, offices, houses, um, uh, condo development, whatever. Uh, remodels, remodels, uh, kitchens, bathrooms. And if Mrs. Smith calls and needs a light bulb change, we go change the light bulb. Yeah. So it, it's whatever our it's it's whatever our area needs. That's what we do. And we are general contractors that specialize in carpentry. I'm not a mason. Right. I'm not a drywall finisher. You know, we're carpenters. Carpenter by trade. Carpenter by trade. And then I'm a draftsman by schooling and civil engineering technician. But that's that's my schooling. Um, and so what we have done, and I think what's been our real niche is we are a design build type of firm. Yeah. Now, when it comes to commercial work, I'm not an architect or a registered engineer and somebody has to stamp that, uh, product, you know, that, that drawing that we do. And so what I do is I do all the legwork, get the floor plans done, the elevations, actually bid it to make sure that the customer can afford it. And then we'll take it to an engineer or an architect to have it get it stamped. finalized, yeah. stamped, and run through state. Right. And we have um, uh, a group that we typically deal with all the time on that, and so it works out very well. And it, I, I find it interesting that you've been able to survive a twenty-mile radius, say, of East Liverpool. I mean, that East Liverpool's not a real, real big town. <laughs> right, but uh, there's a need, and uh, 
like, like Baird Brothers, we don't turn our nose up to much of anything. Mm -hmm. if, if there's a need, we're there, you know. You can't be a prima donna. I mean, you have to take whatever is, is thrown at you, yeah. you know. You, 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 and, and, and you know what, Mike, in, in saying that, and you use the example of, you know, Sally needs a light bulb change. You, you, you do that because that's who you are. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, she might not be spending tens of thousands of dollars with you, but because that's who you are, that's your values, that's, you know, and, and that reputation allows you to exist in a 20 mile radius. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because. Sally, Sally got her light bulb change, and maybe her son or daughter is building a house next year. Who, who are they going to come to? They're going to come to you guys, right? And that, that's, that, that speaks volumes, and, and, and it's, it's, uh, I think it's a good approach to live by, and we, we try that here at Baird's. Uh, you know, every, every, every day is a work day, and some days... Uh, it's, it's more giving than taking. Yeah. But, you know, and, and you're saying about Bear being that way. Um, back in the early 80s, uh, we worked out of his basement. We had a table saw. We had your little shop that you have here in his basement. And we would do things down there. Well, it started getting bigger, needed some space. Uh, we wanted a shop and we ended up moving in. Uh, some friends of ours had some warehouse space. And so we moved into that. And uh, but we didn't have a shop set up and we didn't know where to go to, uh, you know, figure out what we needed and what we wanted. And we ended up coming to Baird and uh, I think it was Dick helped us out. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, literally got us in touch with uh, uh, Power Tool. Yeah. And, oh, and, and scoped Bobby out Blazer. Bobby Blazer. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and basically laid out everything, came down looked at what we had, showed us what we needed to get. We ended up, I think he actually ordered most of the stuff for us. Yeah, he did. He didn't pay for it though. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, he- He was close to it. Yeah. <laughs> but He uh, must have liked you. <laughs> he was a good guy. <laughs> no, really, he came down and he, and he laid out the shop and, and that shop is still that way today. Most of the pieces of equipment, uh, which was all Delta at yeah. the time, uh, yeah. is still in there. Um, we're not a, um, our shop that we have is not a, what you would call the uh, production shop with the CNC, cut. you know, it, it, it doesn't have the computerized cutting or anything. We, uh, we actually, table saws, miter saws, you know. It's, it's a woodworker shop. It's a woodworker shop, yes. And uh, yeah. that's what we do. And the shop stays, well, we have two guys in there every day. Uh, working. Really? Yeah, every day. Doing everything from everything under the sun. Right now, we're building a, a bar, um, all the bar cabinets, back bar, front bar. You know yeah. everything. Um, what we do, we we use the shop to support what we do in the field. We don't solicit for like like if somebody came to you and said, "Hey, we would like some kitchen cabinets built." We wouldn't do that. Right. We we only do what we for projects you have going exactly on. exactly yeah. and and we do buy boxed cabinets you know for houses because right. it's more cost effective. But what's great about us is we can really get customized in that whatever they don't supply we can make. Yeah, and that's what we do. And and uh, just you know, and looking around at what you have here, that's that's exactly what we do on a smaller scale. Yeah, and that's and that's a great that's a great asset for you to have. Oh yeah, because that that takes you to a different level than every other builder. Yeah. In in the marketplace, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've done uh, uh, full bank teller lines. Uh, uh, well, we just finished uh, uh, an auto parts store doing the whole counter system in it. Uh, yeah. So, but but those are our jobs, you know, that we're doing. Right. Right. That's that's interesting. That's. Uh, it's just it, to have to have access to that, 
And you're keeping a couple guys busy doing that all the time. Oh, all the time, all the time. Yeah, it's come a long way from being in his basement. <laughs> I'm a long way from being in his basement and built this gorgeous bar uh, down in the basement that we had to take to a job and ended up couldn't get it out of the basement. <laughs> You had to tell that yeah, one, well, didn't you? <laughs> truth's the truth. You you had to be the one. You had to be the one on the measuring tape on that job. <laughs> Probably was. <laughs> nice looking bar. No, we did. We ended up what cutting it in half, taking it out, putting it back together again. But it did. But yeah, that was that was tough. I think that's what made us get our shop. <laughs> well, you know that's. I mean, it's it, it's an it's an appreciation uh, of of craftsmanship. I mean, we, we tried to, to, uh, set that bar every day as far as what, what is expected from our product and the same thing coming out of your shop, you have control over that, you know? Uh, and, and that, man, I just, I, I just think throughout the home building process, you know, I'll use a, a very, very simple example bookcases on either side of the fireplace it's a no-brainer for you guys right i mean you have you have that you have that available to you that's i i, I did not i i did not know that you you actually ran a little for lack of a better word a cabinet shop uh but you can do everything and anything you can build mantles well you know like uh, uh what we do a lot of times now too is vinyl windows are becoming so prevalent you know, in, yeah. in homes they are. But uh, what we do is we don't order them with extension jams on them. And so we get everything from you guys and we cut the extension jams, the sills, you know, do everything. And then we literally trim the whole thing out. And then we, in the shop, everything is pre-done. And we could just take it right out and pop them into the opening, anchor them in, you know, seal yeah. it off. Beautiful, pre, beautiful pre, prefab work. It yeah. in the, prefab it in the shop, take it to the job Quick. site. and. Yeah. Quick. So yeah. anything that we can prefab, we prefab and take it out. Oh, sure. Sure. I mean, and a lot of things in woodworking, you can accomplish a lot in the field, but if you're in a shop setting, a lot of times your accuracy and quality goes up. And speed. Oh yeah. yeah. Cause everything's right there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then like you're saying, you, you, build a, 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 a one by four box of extension jams, apply one side of casing to it and walk out to the job site, little shim here or there and boom. And, and you, have, you have a beautiful piece done. Yeah. And I would say that today, I mean, uh, I said we're, we're general contractors that specialize in carpentry. And I would have to even uh, take that farther and say we specialize in finished carpentry. Um, we don't, it, look, it, it's a sign of the times. I mean, we're not running an 18, 20 man crew like we used to, you know, where we did everything, framing, siding, roofing, yeah. you know, uh, anything that had to do with carpentry, we had our guys doing it. We just can't find the help these days. And so the, the guys we have are excellent. I mean, really good, devoted carpenters. And, and we have three young boys that are, are uh, we started what, last year? Mm -hmm. And they're just doing great. And uh, but, you know, we, we focus more on the finished carpentry because we are getting, uh, we're all getting a little more seasoned, may I say. That was and uh, <laughs> so we're getting more of the list of things we don't want to do instead of the things we want to do. Nobody wants to go on the roof. Nobody wants to. Yeah. Right? Except him. He'll well, still. Yeah, he, he's still. He hasn't learned yet. You ought to see me Ooh. fall off of one. <laughs> I've done that. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. Well, last year, I mean, you remember he, he broke yeah. his hip, yeah, yeah, because he fell off of a, off a ladder. Off a ladder. But, but the kicker was he wouldn't go get checked. So for 10 days, he had the tool, the nail apron on, working before he finally let me take him down <laughs> to get x-rays. <laughs> and then they found it was broken. So, you know, year, years ago, my dad always told me, he says, son, if you're going to be stupid, you better be tough. Well, guess what? You're a My tough son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Joe? <laughs> He's tough. I feel like somebody's making a sandwich and I'm the meat. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, yeah. But no, I mean that's uh, uh, you know that's that's kind of what we you know what what we've evolved into. Yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, I I just like the fact that you you said you you picked up a couple new boys that are mm -hmm. that are working out and and we got to tell folks uh, you guys have realized it you've you've paid your dues and and came up through the ranks but for some of these younger kids that there is so much opportunity in the trades oh oh my god yeah 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 you know uh you mentioned you mentioned like three dollars and fifty cents an hour you know <laughs> and what these kids if they can show up in the morning and give you eight or nine or ten hours whatever they can make a darn good living. Make a darn good living. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're not paying peanuts, so. Yeah, and and the thing about it, just like you guys in starting your your business, those kids spend some time with somebody like you folks, and they get five, six, seven, eight years under their belt. There's opportunity. You want to be the boss? Go out and be your own boss. Yeah. But you have to have that footing laid and, and that experience, and they can gain that through someone like yourselves. And what we've actually done this past year is, um, typically we have framers that will frame a house up, and then we come in afterwards, and we spend a week doing what we call the detail framing. And not just fixing, I don't want to make it sound like that because it's not, but it's it's the detail stuff that we need to do for, you know, the, the beams, the box beams, the trim, the, you know, whatever has to be Blocking done. Blocking for the we, curtain rods. We, we spend <laughs> yeah. time yeah. just doing that stuff ourselves. But what we did this year was we had a couple of uh, smaller ranch style uh, units that were a little easier. We took the kids out and framed, our, framed them ourselves. So that the, they could they, see. They benefited yeah, from it. Yeah. They because the problem it. is, is that uh, carpenters these days, um, when I came up through, a carpenter was someone that could do everything. You know, frame, lay out rafters, cut miters, do, figure out everything. Well, now everybody wants to be a, uh, a, a specialist. You know, oh, I do metal studs. Oh, I do framing. Oh, I do you know, roofs, I do. But yeah, the fact is, is a carpenter should be able to do all that. And that's what we're trying to show these kids is a little bit of everything. Sure, they'll find their niche yeah. and what they're better at, but they need to know everything. How many how many footers did you did you lay out and frame over the years? Oh, right? Good Lord, Steve, God only knows. Yeah, but I, I to, to Mike's yeah. point, I mean, you, yeah. you, you, you started there and yeah. And then you expanded on it, and you know. And we actually uh, hand dug our footers for a while. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And we would dump the gravel for the French drain down at the road, so that I could wheel it all the way up. <laughs> oh, my God. I was keeping them in shape for football. <laughs> you know there were child labor laws. <laughs> Not back then. Not in my house. <laughs> Oh, I can't. <laughs> yeah, there was no sympathy there. <laughs> I, I, I can just see that. I, 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 I can see that. Hey, Mike, move, move that pile of dirt over there. Come in tomorrow. Mike, move that pile of dirt back over where we got it yesterday. <laughs> I think I did okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, so what... I, I know I know you guys are are, are extremely busy right now, uh, and and thank you for for taking some time out of your afternoon, stopping in to visit with us. But what do you what are you seeing design wise? You know, I'm I'm going back to uh, you know the late late '70s, early '80s. Uh, you know, it was it was ranches. It was the two and a half inch. Uh, what we used to call the Hollywood Hollywood casing, yeah. three and a quarter inch Hollywood baseboard. You know, it was that that was it. Oak flush hollow core doors, and or or birch, 
Um, Birch Flash, yeah, yep. right. Yep. And 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 I mean that was that was the era. Uh, that was that was it. And then everybody went from ranches. Everybody had to have a two story center center entry mm-hmm. two story. You know, walk in dining on the left. Uh, living room on the right, walk back to the kitchen, family room on, on one back corner, and and we went through that. So not only has the living space changed, floor uh, floor plan layouts and so forth, uh, but the what's going on inside of the house is as far as, like with Baird product, uh, it seems right now we can't produce enough poplar material because there's so much uh, painting going on as yeah. far as painting interior really decorating, yeah. you know, and and how how do you see that, you know, coming into 2022? Uh, we don't see that changing anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I mean, we offer, you know, we offer all of the stain grade species, the, the red oak, the maple, you know, the cherry, uh, the hickory, hickory being very popular right now. Uh, but we see that being used more for feature focal points than we do the common thread throughout the house. You know, uh, we're seeing a lot of paint. How about, how about you, Mike? Oh, paint's huge right now. Um, and the finger joint and poplar is so great because uh, um, it's still wood, it's pieces put together, and it's so much more stable. So we're getting, uh, it's, it's a far superior product when you're painting is that finger jointed. Um, but it, it is amazing how things have changed. You know, back, back in the 80s or, you know, early 90s, it was the 1,400 square foot raised ranch house with one window in each room because that's all you needed, you know. <laughs> but uh, now, I mean, we're, we're getting into, uh, it's very seldom we're looking at anything under 2,800 square feet up to eight, 9,000 square feet, you know, yeah. for homes. Yeah. Um, p- roof lines all over the place, different pitches, different uh, foundations all over. It's just, and, and like I said, all of the homes that we build, we design, you know, but the people come to us with, uh, you know, basically what I ask people when we're getting started is just look on the internet, show me some pictures. You know, because you'd be surprised if they can bring me three different pictures of homes. It, it's funny how you can you can pick up on their style, you know, just from that. Very seldom do you have, you know, two ends of the spectrum. Usually, yeah. you know, when they bring you a couple of pictures, you can pretty much tell what they want. Then ask them what they're they're looking for. Let's face it. Everything is this open floor plan design. All right now. Right now. Sure is. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, um, you know, as far as, like you're saying, wood products, we're doing mostly everything painted uh, with hardwood floors. Hardwood floors are back. I mean, it's, I can remember people, my grandparents having the hardwood floors and covering them over with carpet, you know. And uh, now, you know, with a lot of hickory, we're hickory floors, uh, white oak floors. White oak, white oak has, mm-hmm. has been very popular, as has been the hickory. And, and any any floor covering is is not cheap. Well, I don't care whether you're you're talking about carpeting or tile, or the case of hardwood. But with the hardwood, there's there's it separates itself a little bit in in the values. Oh, it's not just that. It, it's uh, it's such an easy sell. It's like I tell people when you put down a hardwood floor, and that they're always worried about scratching or denning or whatever. And you know what? If you scratch or dent a hardwood floor, it's a character mark. You know, to, to be honest with you, it does add, you can throw a little scratch cover on it or whatever, but it adds a patina, a look to it, you know? And if you do that to a laminate floor, it's shot, yeah. it's done. And so, you know, it, it, it's like I tell people, it's a once, one and done, you know? You get 10 years down the road and it starts to look a little bit war, have Sam the wood floor man come in and, yeah. and, and re-sand it. Scuff, and, and scuff it up and it. recode it. And, and it looks great. So. You know, and that's, and that's, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a huge point. And uh, people's, people's taste changes uh, along with being influenced by, by interior decorators and so forth. 
seven, 10 years down the road, you want to take that light colored floor and all of a sudden you want something dark again, you call Sam, he comes in, sands it, he'll make it any color you want. And yeah. you still have, you have a brand new hardwood floor and you're up and running again, mm -hmm. you know, and you know what, the, the thing is with these homes, and it's like I, I always give people the speech whenever they're in, we're sitting down, we're talking about numbers. I tell them, I said, uh, what drives the cost of this job? It's you, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner. It's what you want to put in that house. Yeah. And that's where the big difference is. And then, you know, it, and, and another thing I always say too, is, and dad and I, and this, this does bother us sometimes, um, we've got a reputation of being high priced in East Liverpool. Okay, I mean, that's what they say, oh, you're high priced. And that is so far from the truth. I mean, our hourly wages are probably under what a lot of the market is around. Um, it's just that we do high priced work. People see what we're capable of doing. They see your product and they want it, you know? And, and that's, that's the difference, you know, that is the difference. And we don't, we don't feel, you know, there, there's companies out there that are mass producers of homes, and I don't knock that. I mean, they, they, they've got great curb appeal. They, they fill a niche that we don't care to fill, you know. And, and so what we do is we don't try to compete with that. We try to complement that. And, and I think that's where it's been nice. We don't have to build 20 homes a year. You know, we, we can get by with one, two, three, four, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But each one, I mean, that's, it's ours, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's part of us. Yeah, and, and with today's consumer, homeowner, they come to you and they have ideas and, and there's, there's so much available to people today via our cell phones, our iPads, the computer, uh, and all the social media, um, they come to you and, and they're going to, they might have a want list. Right. And to your point, well, we can do it for this, but your want list says it's going to be this, mm -hmm. you know, we try to give them the options. You know, it's like I said, it, it's not like we won't put down uh, carpeting or, well, we don't do it, but it's not like we won't do that. It's just that if, if you're asking my opinion, this is where you should go. Yeah. How, how, how do you see the homeowners today when they, when they come to you? Are they, are they more educated than say a homeowner 20 years ago, as far as their ability to research product and things of that nature? I mean, it goes the whole way. It goes, you know, the, the smart homes, uh, I mean. Well, well, the smart homes anymore, uh, we've kind of quit chasing that, uh, that app, you know, in trying to make the, when I say smart home, I'm talking about technology wise. Right. Because uh, I can remember back uh, when we did the, the, the whole house uh, alarm system and you'd open up the door and garage door, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, the trouble is, is that a smart home today is pretty stupid three weeks from now, you know, because the, the technology is leaving. It's evolving, so, yeah. so we don't really, uh, now, if people want that, yes, our electricians handle all of that and, and take care of it. But I try to steer people back, you know, because uh, so much of, of everything is now Wi-Fi. Well, that's uh, it. That's that, but, uh, but, you know, uh, smart homes are also energy efficient homes. And yes, we, you know, everything that we do now is uh, uh, two by six walls and uh, higher insulation and better windows, you know, when it comes to, uh, but still I have to laugh, you, you make a two by six wall for insulation value and then you fill the whole wall with windows and doors. <laughs> yeah. A little irony, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, but but you, you bring up you you bring up a, a an interesting point as far as how the the building materials have a lot of them, not all of them. I mean, a two by four is still a two by four, mm -hmm. right? But some of the other building products, how how they've changed and evolved over the years, uh, some for the better, and then. There's there's products we could throw out there that we could say well it was it was better back in the 70s or back in the 80s yeah 
Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we see it with some products that we bring in. Uh, you can buy good plywood or you can buy junk plywood. Wow. Right? We, yeah, that's, yeah. You know, and, and uh, you guys with your, your carpentry uh, background and, and, and trimming and cabinet building and stuff, you, you guys know that. I mean, uh, we sell, we sell a, a, a very high grade, uh, cabinet grade plywood versus down the road that they might be 10 or $12 a sheet less, but there's a reason. It, but the thing is, is that whether you're using that cheaper grade of plywood or the better plywood, it's the, still the same amount of money to put it together. <laughs> so you're better off getting the good stuff right now and being done with it, you know, because it costs the same yeah. to cut it, shape it, fit it. How many houses you got on the books right now? Right now we're finishing, well, uh, moving in this weekend. Uh, the one, uh, the other one we have, um, uh, we're starting to trim, actually waiting on the doors. No. That. No. Yeah, no, they're, they're custom, custom hickory. Well, at the top area, it's probably laying yeah. up there on his yeah. desk. He hasn't typed it yet. No, it's, it's terrible. But uh, no, uh, we're doing that house. Uh, so we're going to start trimming it out this week. And we're drawing up four other ones right now. So, I mean, still to have the winter and trying to finish out a couple of homes. That's yeah, good. That's right amazing. Now well, we're, I'll tell you, it's great right now. Oh. We, we, have, we have no outside work right now. Oh, no. Everything we have is inside. Yeah, that's I, I, and that's you know a, a lot of guys guys try and accomplish that on, on first program. time ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know it, it don't always work out that no, way. No, no. But that's what that's what folks you know ask us. Well, it's winter. Are you guys slowing down? I says no. I says everybody's inside trimming right now. Mm -hmm. You know this time of year. I mean that's that's all always been the case, but. Uh, yeah, we've got a cool project going right now, commercial-wise, and it's a nice mix. It's the Masonic Temple in East Liverpool, and we're putting a five-stop elevator uh, in it. Uh, and what's cool about it is the two buildings, it's the old Godwin, Mount, uh, Godwin mm -hmm. Mansion, which was a pottery down there. Um, and it was 1860, I think, right around there. And then there was addition put on the back in 1910. And so we're sending up this elevator shaft and feeding both portions out of this. But what's cool about it is, which I've got to get with Eric uh, next week, is a lot of what we're doing inside, we're trying to restore back to the way it was. Yeah. So it's requiring, uh, you know, some, some oak, some just different species of woods and, and some nicer doors that we're going to have uh, you guys make up for us. You know, and that's and and I know I know both of you guys have it, and 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 I have it, and is is an appreciation for the old woodwork. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, not only the, the the woodwork itself, how it was manufactured, but the care that was given on the installation side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember my father. Uh, in fact, I still have it. the old uh, uh, metal metal frame miter box with I still the miter saw. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you think how easy we have it now. <laughs> I mean that that ten inch slide compound. <laughs> it's a dream, <laughs> but yeah. but that's why you guys had had bi biceps like that because. <laughs> <laughs> but you know when you think and, and this is this is really neat um we have relatives still in italy um and the name of the little town is called Schwitel alfadania and um our uh but that's where my great grandfather was from and so filippo would have been cousin yeah but he would have been pap pap's first cousin but filippo who has passed away a few years ago um, his daughter, uh, we still visit them now, haven't for two years because right. of the uh, COVID. But um, it was so cool because Mauro, her husband, has his own woodworking shop, full cabinet shop. And uh, he has some of Filippo's old tools. And we were looking at some of your tools up here yeah. and, you know, the, the files and, and, and everything. And so when we went to leave the last time we were there, I was in the shop 
And I didn't notice, I notice it now that I see the picture, but there's one of the pieces is missing off of the wall. And he gave it to dad oh. as a memento of, you that's, know, that's cool. a day gone by and our relatives, you know, and that was, that was really cool. So we've got it in our shop, hanging up there with the picture. And, and, and you, you talk about appreciation. We, we were talking about a miter, a miter saw, right? Imagine showing up on a, on a job site in the morning and the boss handing you a molding plane and telling you, I need 200 feet of a five inch crown molding. And that's there's, the way it was. There's, there, there's the stack of rough lumber. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't just one, it wasn't one piece that did. You started with this, went to this, went to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, I'll see you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, and and that's, that, that's that's one of the subjects I wanted to touch on. You know how how the tools and the resources have changed over the years, and 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 at, at one time, being a carpenter, that was a tough job. Yeah. I mean, not that it, it's easy work today, but it's a heck of a lot easier than it used to be, you know. Hand a guy, hand a guy a hammer and a and a fifty pound box of sixteen common, and say, "Here, we're building walls today." Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Where's where's the air compressor? <laughs> yeah. Well, my first jobs working for him was uh, nailing down the floors. Yeah. They'd get the they'd get the plywood set into place, and I would spend all day long just pounding nails, <laughs> striking lines, <laughs> striking lines, and pounding nails. <laughs> yeah. He didn't make him do all that hard work. He got pretty good at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think he had a good teacher. <laughs> we go down in the basement and look up to see how many nails he missed his joist with. <laughs> yeah, just a few years ago. Oh, shoot. Uh, you know, it's, it, uh, that's fun, you know, looking back and, and, uh, you guys share stories like that. Um, you guys have been coming here for a long, long time. Uh, you you mentioned you mentioned uh, interaction with with Dick Baird, one of the founding brothers, and and uh, uh, my gosh, I, I as long as I can remember, you guys you guys have been coming in here. I we thank you we thank you for for your your support and your loyalty to us, and and uh, it's. It, it's it's amazing how relationships develop, and and we've been we've been blessed with uh, with customers like yourselves, and uh, I know you guys have a, a very good relationship with one of the guys up front in Eric Heiner, and and uh, uh, it, it it's easy doing business when there's no problems. There might be situations, but it's not a problem. It's going to get taken care of, right? Yep. Whether that's, believe it or not, that's one of our our mottos, which is never problems, only solutions. Yeah. And it's the truth, you know. And there's no sense getting all worked up, and you know, just sit back, relax, figure it out. But uh, you guys, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've I seen mean, you excited a time or two. Well, that's my nature. <laughs> I'm Italian. <laughs> oh, oh, he's I, I, calm. He's calm all the time. I, I can, I, I can only imagine. You were sharing, you were sharing uh, in conversation earlier today. I, 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 I would have paid to see you refereeing basketball games. A lot of people did. <laughs> I think I think you you found some enjoyment out of tossing fans out of the gymnasium. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> huh? I just didn't have much use for loudmouth. <laughs> I think you got a certain amount of enjoyment out of it, though. <laughs> that was his stress reliever. <laughs> no, I, I enjoyed refereeing. I did a lot. Met a, met a lot of nice people. A lot of... Uh, that's what it's about. 
it's, it's, it, you know, uh, it, it, my gosh, life's too short. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, you know, uh, friends, friends don't come around very often that, uh, you know, and, and that's what we consider you guys. I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're a business partner, but, but you're friends too. And, and, uh, we really enjoy that. But, why did, why did you look at me and say life is short? <laughs> No, you're my you're my hero, Joe. <laughs> you know that. I, I, I I can I can only only hope to be as be as ornery as you. Oh no, you don't <laughs> want that. that point. <laughs> you don't want that. Oh shoot. Uh, well, guys, uh, really. <laughs> appreciate appreciate taking time to come up this afternoon and, and visit with us and and uh you know uh we appreciate you trusting in us to be one of your building supply suppliers and and uh we look forward to uh to some more homes in 2022 and beyond uh continued success to you guys and uh, you be sure when you're out here picking up at Will Call, you better come up the steps and say hello to, to Eric and myself. I always do, Donna. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you always come with a story, and we appreciate that. And we get... you guys, then you guys crank him up and then send him <laughs> home to me. So I appreciate that, too. <laughs> what do we tell you? <laughs> huh? Would, would would you tell would you tell Eric and I last week? They they look for some place to send you just to get you off the job yep, site these yeah. days. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I think I think they were paying attention over the year or so, Joe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much, folks. Continue to follow us. Track these guys down, Delaware Construction out in East Liverpool. And and uh, if nothing else, just have a conversation with them. You can tell they're per both pretty nice guys, okay? Keep following us, BairdBrothers.com, Content Studio. Follow our social platforms, and we will see you next time. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, Give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time, 